They were the two second half goals that took Manchester City to yet another three points, inspired though by that man behind me. Let's get his post-match thoughts. Here is Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin, well played on the back of a international break and against top opposition. How good was that from Man City? I, w I thought it was really good today. Um, especially the, f the first half we totally dominated. Uh, they had the one chance that was offside with, with Vardy, but basically was one team playing. Second half, they did a little bit better, I think, Leicester, but I think if you look at the 90 minutes, it was 2-0. I think we deserved even more, more goals and, you know, after... An international break, I think that's that's really well done from the team. In a way, were you surprised by just how quickly you found your rhythm again? It was something the manager spoke a lot about in the week. It, it, it isn't easy to do that. Well, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, I, I came back Tuesday after the game. Uh, so we, I started training on Thursday and uh, half the team started training yesterday. So basically, there's nothing we can do. We can just rest up and be ready, very ready for the game. And I think the, the manager chose the people who were... Uh, the longest here. Um, Do you think that helped, picking the freshest team possible? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but obviously when you, when you win the game, it's always the right pick, isn't it? And the team does really well, so, but um, yeah, the team did really well, so I'm really pleased. What was said at half-time? Because you'd been dominant, but you weren't ahead. To, to do the same. Obviously, we created chances and uh, we, we, we should have scored, but that happens, you know. We, we knew the way that they play against us. It's going to be really difficult. It's really, they play really defensive. So we, we have to be patient. And uh, I think that's what we did. And uh, very happy for Mandy then to break the, break the deadlock. Yeah. Motivated at all by the last game against Leicester? Way back in September, uh, I think it was? It, it doesn't really matter. You know, uh, that was a bad game for us and they deserve to win. Uh, but that's such a long time ago. And I think uh, we picked it up during the season and uh, we did well, so I'm really happy. doesn't go down as an assist, but I guess you'd be really pleased with your role in the second goal, the way to pass. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, in the end, I'm here to provide for the team, and uh, if I can set my teammates up and they, they finish it, I'm happy. You know, we, we, it's one win more, uh, and it's good to get in the rhythm because Tuesday is another game. And have you calmed down now? It just looked like a little moment at the end where we don't normally see you like that. No, it happens. I thought something was a little bit serious, but that's football. It's a contact sport. Uh, they say it's a yellow, so it's fine. OK. Now, what is serious is his ability that he shows <laughs> week in, week out, because this man has said to me, if there's one player you could play with in your career, it'd be this guy. I mean, what about yeah. the level of performance today? Yeah, there's no-one in the world that I'd prefer to play with in this day and age than, than that, that lad. I mean, the, his, the, the way he, he touches the ball there, left foot, right foot, and then swings in a brilliant foot with his left foot, then he shows a... a, a a dipper, you know, how, how we can get that up and down. I want you to, everyone to watch, though, the weight of every ball. It's, all, it's everything. The key is in the weight of the pass. And what he does is he risks his own, you know, the ball actually getting to the destination himself. He doesn't just blast it at someone and says, right, I've done my job now, how good your touch? He actually does everything for them. He puts it exactly so nobody needs to take a touch. I mean, this is unbelievable. Two defenders are an inch away from it. There, oh. there. And as you said, it doesn't even need to take a touch, Has uh, us. It, it's just rolling perfectly for him. I mean, imagine it, right? Imagine playing with him. I know. It's just only because it's that, though, that there, even that, he's got to score Mahrez. He should have scored two today, Mahrez. But it's the quickness of his thinking as a forward who's, who, like myself, who wants to attack that space. He, he is is easily the best you'd want to play with because he, like he said, he doesn't care about anything. He just wants to create stuff for his teammates to score. That's music to my ears in that because he doesn't get it wrong very often. Let's have a look at that pass for 2-0 again. Yeah. Because how sublime <laughs> is this, right? Because it's the weight to st and, and the thing is, it's very natural to him. It, it, we probably say, we're to like, look at that, both of them, inches. And we're saying that is just magnificent. A lot of players cannot do that. And he does that as second nature. He makes sure that it's in the rights. Like, when you look at Jesus, not only is he taking two players out, but it's perfect on the right side of Jesus. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what top draw. When people say about world class and top draw, that's the difference. It's like a Gaza. When them guys pass the ball to you, they take players out so you get the time to take the touch. I just love the way he takes all the risk himself. As I say, he can hit that ball, that pass, harder. He can get, hit half of these passes harder and make it more difficult for the attacker, but then the attacker's got to take a touch and, and, and make his own decision. He, he doesn't only thread the eye of a needle, he do, doesn't only see the pass in the first place before anyone else, 
but then he puts it on a plate so that the, the attacker doesn't even have to think about it himself. He yeah. doesn't have to take a touch. It's just perfectly rolled into his path. And then, right, do you want to shoot or do you want to pass it uh, across to your mate Sterling? It's, it's, it's unbelievable how he... he you know, like, because sometimes he'll give the ball away and people think, that's a bad ball. Mm. But it wasn't really. As I say, he's, t he's constantly taken all the risk on his own shoulders by making the passes even harder than they should be. That's how good he is. He's, he's going for an, a 10 out of 10 as opposed to a 9 out of 10 that he can do all the time um, just to make it easier for someone else because he is so capable. That's what we've come to expect. What we haven't come to expect is goals from Benjamin Mendy yeah. and particularly from his right foot, but yeah. in terms of, if a striker had scored this, you'd be praising him to the hill. Yeah, because his composure um, at, the, at the vital time was absolutely brilliant, because when it comes back in, it comes onto his, his left foot. I'm sure people think he's just going to hit it there. But that touch there, and, and to keep it close enough, so as the other defender's not trying to come in and block him on his weaker foot, it's top draw. Now, you see, Tielemans there, he's seen him, to, I think that this is Tielemans' um, responsibility. See, all Brighton's got Jesus, he's got his eye on him, and he, end, he ends up getting on the inside of him, which is good. But Tielemans, again, he has another look there. He knows that he's there, so at some stage, you want to try and be engaging, getting a bit closer. Now what he's done, he's got drawn into the ball, and now B Benjamin Mendy's got the time, and then this is quality. There, he's kept it close enough to him where he can then get a nice strike on his, on his weaker foot. And you look at him, really concentrated on the way he's, he's slotted that way. Really, really good goal. But maybe that's why Pep was so surprised. It took it like a forward. <laughs> it was a great shot. It took it like a forward. <laughs> it was a brilliant shot. But being so one-footed, because Mendy is very left-sided, yeah. it probably helped him in that situation, because we all, we all thought, wow, why didn't he shoot there? And he cuts it onto his weaker foot. And uh, as I say, probably that surprise element that got him the, got him the goal, but it was a lovely finish. Mm. Indeed it was. So the latest manager to be beaten by that standard of football today is the Leicester boss, Brendan Rodgers. Well, Brendan, against... The very best. What did you make of your team's performance? Yeah, I thought for a large part of the first half we, we defend it well. Uh, I felt there was a little bit of tiredness in our game technically. You know, you know, like so Wilf and who I thought was excellent in the game, but with lots of the international players coming back and you know and only getting together on the Friday, I thought that technically we probably weren't as good as what we were last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago when we played. Um, we're disappointed with the goals. The two goals come at just that moment when we start to chase it a little bit and then uh, they open up the space in the middle when De Bruyne gets turned. And from a throw-in that we spoke about, you know, they, they want to throw it into the middle of the pitch and, um, and they get out too easy on that one. Apart from that, we had some decent chances in the game, but listen, the, the best team has won the game, so we have no excuses. No excuses, but you felt they could have done better today? Well, I think so, simply because, like, at the start of the show, I, I said... I. I I fancy them to have a go at City simply because City will be wary of them, what they can do. But then you have to turn it, turn it around again and think to yourself, well, City gave them no opportunity to get play. Tielemans couldn't quite get into the game to get himself on the ball to maybe release um, Iniacho, maybe release Vardy. And, and it, Brendan Rodgers saying he thought they defended well in the first half. I, I thought that City just didn't, they weren't as clinical as they, they could have been. Because like Kevin De Bruyne said, there was only team, one team playing. And he's right. And in the end, that could have easily been a 4-0 four, four and he wouldn't have no, no complaints with that. He'd have had to take that on the chin. Did they show them too much respect to begin with, Leicester? Yeah, I think so. I think this was, you could argue before the game, this was the perfect time to play them. After an international break with Manchester City going for the, uh, you know, for the Champions League in midweek, you know, they've, they've rested a few of the big hitters. You, you mentioned before the game that the stars that were on the bench... So this was an opportunity, I, I felt, against Manchester City with those, uh, with those different elements in play. But never, ever, at any stage, did I think that City were, were out of control of the mm -hmm. game. Always under control, always calm, collected, cool. OK, didn't score in the first half, but it was a matter of time, and they just showed their class in the end. So Manchester City 11 points away from the title. Next up...